Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And boy, this is uh, really curious. Really curious. For the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm, they're releasing a lot of expanded universe books with new covers. You mean you mean the stuff that they got rid of when they, when Disney took over and they said that they no longer can and we're not going to mess with it anymore? That stuff. Yeah, it is really weird because this is part of a pattern that we have seen lately, celebrating the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm. That they're bringing back a lot of uh, classic Star Wars stuff. Now, granted, you know, for a celebration like this, you think they would. But it's also uh, also kind of kind of weird that part of the celebration included a new Jar Jar Binks figure, but nothing for Ray. Mm -hmm. um, it does seem like somebody at Lucasfilm realizes some of the classic stuff sells, uh, and the newer stuff like the High Republic maybe isn't doing as well as they were hoping for. Well, I think it's interesting too because they keep pulling characters from the expanded universe i'm sorry that what they call them legends now legends yeah. um they keep pulling stuff from those you know that they're no longer canon but they're going to pick and choose what they want to pull and use and, that, and and we don't know if people are getting paid for that well we know in the case of alan dean foster he wasn't mm -hmm. uh, we don't know how many other now i, I believe timothy zahn is because i think he's still writing for well he is still writing for lucasfilm because he did the uh the new thrawn books yep so i'm sure he's got a deal in place but we know that some of the uh, some of the other Lucasfilm uh, writers uh, pre Disney are not getting paid. Right. The last time we heard, mm -hmm. so you know it, it does just look like uh, Lucasfilm wants to have its cake and eat it too. They want to go back and try to appease old school fans, take their money. Well, it's funny to me because <laughs> when 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 the new Disney sequel trilogy came out, people mentioned they said, "Why didn't you just base it on like Heir to the Empire, or Dark Force Rising, Last Command?" And then they're like, "Well, this is the new stuff. That stuff no longer is canon. We don't want to. We don't want that stuff anymore." People kept saying those were better. That was a better story. But now they're they're totally fine with you know re releasing it again to sell it with new covers. I mean, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out why you know Tron's on the cover of this one. Yeah, I, mean, I know it looks like Tron. Tron. It's it looks Luke. Like Tron. Yeah, it looks like it looks like Tron. Tron Thron. Uh, so anyway, we're going to talk about that and kind of the utter state of Lucasfilm right now, which we've been covering, which is, I don't think Lucasfilm has any direction at all. I think they're just throwing spaghetti against the wall, hoping something will stick. And if it doesn't stick, it's because you're a racist and a misogynist. Right. And it's a all your fault. It's all your fault. It's all your, your fault, fault, fans. Uh, we don't know what we're doing. It's all your fault. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 184,000 subs. Mm -hmm. We do talk about Star Wars, talk about pop culture, talk about movies, whatever interests us that day. We've been covering the slow, sad demise of Lucasfilm. And immediately we're going to have people go like, oh, no, Lucasfilm is fine. It's well, like, you no. know, I'm 100% on board with releasing the good stuff from the expanded universe. It's yeah. weird. I mean, I'm assuming they're going to do it in waves because I can't just have Heir to the Empire and leave it. But, you know, so I think it's cool that they're releasing it. Now they're putting them in a larger format, which is a little weird. Yeah, it is. Um, you can see. I guess it's it's big text, oh, so you can okay. you can read it better. Maybe I don't know. Um, but uh, these are classic books. Even Shatter, we had Shatterpoint too. That was the Mace Windu book. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, this is what people wanted. We thought that the expanded universe would continue. The first thing Disney did was burn down the expanded universe. They kept some of the stuff in in print as legends, but they they burned it down. And they replaced it with their own more convoluted uh, expanded universe. Right, because why would you want Heir to the Empire and those fantastic characters when you can, you know, read the higher public and have, you know, all these weird characters like Geode that fly around in the ship called Vessel with characters that, you know, are somehow both uh, trans and non-binary for some reason. I mean, I, I, it's, you know, why? Why would you want those other things when you can have all that glorious thing, all the glorious things? Yeah, I love how in the comic they, they make sure that to lecture the Padawan on the proper pronoun usage. Uh, yes, yeah. You know, it's that like, and and also, yes, we have a rock that's interested in sex. Um, well, it's so, not. No, the rock itself is not interested in sex. I don't think. I think that they're just, they're just discussing it. I don't think the rock. I think the rock is asexual. The rock wants to get self off. The rock, no. The rock is like no <laughs> interest. In you keep getting that wrong. No, sexy rock. Don't get it. You stop getting that wrong. Anyway, I don't care about any of it. The High Republic is dog shit. 
I don't It's not care. doing well. They're not selling. They presented it in such a way. They tried to do what these got these books did. But like you've mentioned before, the reason that like Air of the Empire and like the, the the you know the, the Timothy Zahn books and, and all that in the X-Wing series did so well was because there was a drought of Star Wars for years. And so it was like, oh, this is how we're gonna get Star Wars. And back then a lot of people read more. I'm just yeah, gonna be honest. They, did, yeah. they didn't have like all of the stuff you waste your time on now, so people read more books. It's just the way it was. Yeah, and yeah, it came after a drought, and I remember buying the the Zon trilogy. They had a, a poster up for it in the comic shop in the early '90s. It's like, oh my god, they're bringing out new Star Wars. How did this happen? I was all over it too, and I read that book. I read that trilogy like multiple times. Uh, but what they're doing is they're cherry picking characters and ideas for you know as much shade as they threw at the expanded universe. They had no problem bringing Thrawn back. Mm-hmm. They had no problem uh, using the clone emperor as a plot device mm-hmm. in, in uh, Rise of Skywalker, you know, so they're taking what they want, but then they're adding in their own really stupid ideas. Well, they're picking here, the, the, the Timothy Zahn trilogy, uh, you know, the Darth Bane series, yeah. and, and you know, Mace Windu. Three things they know are going to be popular. Now, this is stuff that's coming out in June, June 15th with these three books. Now, they did mention there will be other books coming out this fall, republished. I'm sorry, they're, refu- they're already out. If you want to read them, you can go buy them now. Yeah. Republished this fall. Um, and then they might begin the X-Wing series too. Stay tuned, they said. I like the X-Wing series. Yeah, X-Wing. Well, they have a, a, a ranking. Since they announced this, they have a ranking of the best books. Oh, and I'm going uh, guess they're all the new ones. Yeah, a lot of them are, yeah. Bullshit. The, this is on Screen Rant. The 10 Bullshit. best Star Wars books of all time That's ranked. not going to be biased in any way, shape, or form. Uh, number 10 is Rebel Rising. It's canon. Guys, it's canon. Darth Plagueis is now Legends. Uh, I Jedi is Legends. I vaguely remember that one. Outbound Flight Legends. This actually I liked because it connected the prequels mm-hmm. to uh, the Thrawn trilogy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dark Disciple Canon High Republic. Bullshit! The Light High the Republic Jedi. is number five. I am sorry. That's called who who butters our biscuits. The, you know, Star <laughs> the Wars, rocks Lucas, do. Lucas, the, the talking Lucas rocks. Film. So we got to make sure we put them in there, or that it makes it you know. And we'll try to stick in the middle so stick we don't look like middle. we're too, or like we're being too, you know, you know, on the nose. Um, X Wing Rogue Squadron, that almost was as good. good. Uh, Empire's End. That this is the book you had to read to. Oh, Chuck Wendig. Chuck Wendig. And the, the canon book. Yeah. Uh-huh. To understand how the hell the Empire survived. Again, their own Disney's own expanded universe is more freaking convoluted now mm-hmm. in five or six years' time than the entire expanded universe was. Yeah, like, exactly. It, it's just so complicated. Oh, Thrawn is because canon. But I mean, Thrawn, an heir to the Empire. Yeah, the whole series is like number one, hell, hands down. That's why Thrawn's number two. But my ass, Chuck Wendig's number three, and the, and the High Republic's number five. All right, so this is a Deseret News has more news on. They said Delray told Deseret News to this day, the EU remains an inspiration for Star Wars creators and is published under the label Legends. Ideas, characters, story elements, and more from new Star Wars entertainment Trace their origins back to material. Oh, from they steal the, shit from the EU all the yeah. time. Characters, storylines, they steal it all the time. Essential Legends Collection curates some of the most treasured stories from the expansive legacy. I, I just can't believe it. Disney immediately, they're like, yeah, we bought we bought Lucasfilm. Let's burn the EU down. But no, let's, let's cherry pick a couple things. Now we've got this weird amalgam of like... EU characters and well, fan even, fiction. and They didn't even do that until after their sequel trilogy did shit. They yeah. didn't do this. They didn't cherry pick Thrawn and all that until after it started going down, you know, off the cliff. At first they were like, oh, we did well with the High Republic, so we made the right choice. Ha ha, suck it, you know. And as it went on, The Last Jedi went off a cliff after a couple weeks. Then you start seeing them roll out these EU stuff. And it's like, really? You know, I mean, it's fine. I'm 100% on board with bringing back the EU and the with legends now because there's a lot of stuff that was much better than what we're getting. Um, but you can still go buy it right now. I mean, they, they have no problem. This is what irritates me about this. They have no problem taking fans' money to mm-hmm. bankroll the new shit. Like, they want your money again for the old stuff that they, they decanonized to bankroll the High Republic. Pay us for the old stuff that's already out there to rebuy the old stuff so that we can call you names. Yeah. And then and then when you don't buy the higher public. I mean, I'm so soured on Star Wars at this point. It was interesting. Somebody mentioned on Twitter the other day about, um, you know, like just not wanting to support 
Disney Star Wars because of the way they have treated the fans. And I'm mm-hmm. like, you know what? I even have a hard time now wanting to sit through the original trilogy. I have I, I used to watch the original trilogy multiple times per year. I don't even want to watch it now. Because it all it does is remind me of all the drama around mm-hmm. Star Wars and Disney and Lucasfilm and all this bullshit going on. Well, a few years ago, I would have probably read The High Republic. Um, I like Star Wars books and I would have read them. But you know what? I've just been so turned off by the behavior out of Lucasfilm. And they and we already saw it ramping up before they even released these books. They were starting the bad behavior again. That I won't even give them a penny for it. Well, we have them releasing, making a big announcement, releasing mm-hmm. a lot of classic stuff. Uh, the 80s Ewok the cartoon. Vintage stuff, yeah. The vintage stuff, yeah. The original Clone Wars, uh, Jen D. Tarkovsky cartoons, uh, you know, on Disney+. Plus. And, again, it's like, let's go back to the classics. I understand it's part of the 50th anniversary. But, really, it tells me that they're like, yeah, we got we to gotta try to at least try to make the fans happy. So, throw some old shit at them. Pretty much. You know. Pretty much. That's what this is about. And and the thing is, you know, that's what people want to see. They want to see the classic stuff. They have zero interest. Zero interest in the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous, guys. They they want to have, again, they want to have their cake and eat it, too. Uh, they It's uh, Schrodinger's fandom. Mm-hmm. You know, they want to take the money from the fans, but they want to insult the fans. The fans are a blessing because they... They, uh, you know, give you all kinds of money, but they're also a curse because all they do is complain. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, I, I think this is probably coming from Disney. I would not be surprised if Disney is like, you know, we're looking at our numbers and we see what sells and what doesn't sell. We see and, people are complaining about what they want. Yeah. And the old stuff sells. Classic toys sell. Vintage stuff sells. Uh, just keep making that stuff because we, we have to pay the bills Mm -hmm. if you guys want to go experiment with your uh your high republic nonsense go ahead and do it uh now i don't know what the sales are going to be like for the high republic they they were saying that they were like oh we sold two hundred thousand copies of high republic number one they said they sold all those star wars comic books too and they were because they were loot crates loot crate yeah uh you know so we'll see but i mean it did sell well the first month we don't see the numbers now like we used to because they hide them and, uh, and they keep doubling down on it on all these blogs and, you know, through their, their own channels and stuff. Nobody cares. Now, the High Republic Into the Dark is the number one teen and young adult oh, spa- shit. space opera. Oh, 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 yeah. Teen and young adult space opera. Teen and young adult so, space you know, opera. You know, category. that features, you know, this kind of character. You know, it, 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 that's, yeah, okay. Yeah, so... <laughs> I love how Space they opera. I love how they love have it. these really obscure genres so they can go to Amazon and say, We're number one in our category. I'm like, this is like when they used to do the uh, separate comics and graphic novel list on in the New York Times, uh, where they were like, Oh yeah, hey, we were number one this week. And uh Neil Gaiman actually called it out and he was like, That's like like being at the kitty table. Like mm-hmm. when you when you get a graphic novel uh, trending uh, or making the top of the New York Times bestseller list above all other fiction. Talk to me because he he's done it. Well, even beyond <laughs> that, look, Ahsoka's here three times. One for audiobook, one for Kindle, one for hardcover. Yeah, I'm like, come on. I mean, they're they're counting themselves multiple times. Then look here, you know, this one. Yeah, look, it's number. It, it, it's like number one with an audible free trial for the audible audiobook, which is under yeah. free trial. Yeah. And how and how hard is that? So I have a bunch of accounts that aren't real. You know, do the free trial, download, you know, the High Republic. What is it that they do? They actually give review copies out to people and they have like verified review copies. Mm-hmm. And then they count them sometimes. To get the, to get the reviews up as like a promotional thing. I, I mean, I don't know. We'll see where the High Republic is in a year. But to me, you know, the fact that they're announcing all of this retro Star Wars uh, seems to indicate that things aren't going as well as they were hoping for. Notice how Ender's Game is still number six and that's been out for how long? And he's a homophobe. I'm just saying. Yeah, you take away the, the Ahsoka being on there, you know, multiple times and stuff like that. It's, it's just funny to me. Uh, Saga makes sense. Saga I know Saga's on there too. Hit. I saw that. But um, these are older books. Yeah. And, and, you know, and they're still holding up there, you know, above some of the Star Wars stuff. It's just funny. As a, it's, it's number one. is a space, space drama. opera. Oh, yeah, space, space drama. Opera. Yeah. Like, like this what? is such a, like, when you're number one in teen and young adults uh, across the board, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. Um, here's a test of courage. This is another one. Number one new release in children's science fiction books. So it's new, re- oh, new releases only. New releases only. Uh, along with Captain Underpants. But again, 
Audible free trial. I'm telling you, you can sign up for those Audible free trials, probably a bunch of different accounts, and then, you know, cancel your account, but you get downloading the accounts. You know what I mean? You know what's funny about Amazon, just kind of a side story here, is you go to graphic novels and you go to trending a lot of times. Everybody's like, oh, my graphic novel's trending on Amazon. And then you realize somebody puts out like some bootleg Minecraft graphic novel mm -hmm. that they do on Kindle and it actually outpaces like the Raina Telgemeier stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's very easily. Uh, well, that's why I started done. doing it, you know, by, by category. Like yeah, you get by category. Um, uh, it's probably being pushed on, you know, stupid book orders and stuff too. Oh, I'm sure. sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the High Republic is is landing with a thud. I mean, I have a hard time believing these numbers when you look at the official YouTube channel and you see how massively downvoted these High Republic videos mm -hmm. are. It, it makes it very, you know, teens. Teens are on YouTube. Why? Why are they getting? Where are all these these teens? Why are they getting twelve thousand downloads? But meanwhile, they put the Bad Batch trailer up and it gets to tons yeah. of you know upvotes and and you know watches. So anyway. Anyway, so there we go, guys. They're gonna keep uh, uh, trying to get you to buy the old stuff that wasn't uh, wasn't good enough mm -mm. just a couple of years ago because they need your money because the other stuff I don't think is selling very well. No, I don't know gonna wrap it up yeah okay so please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants and we will talk later bye